Let us now learn how to name ionic and covalent compounds. To make the naming a lot easier for us, we will divide the compounds into three types. Type 1, compounds will be ionic compounds. Type 2 compounds will also be ionic compounds. While type 3 compounds will be covalent compounds. I know you're thinking, what is the difference between type 1 and type 2 compounds? Remember, ionic compounds are formed when a metal combines with a non-metal. The difference between type 1 and type 2 compound is in the type of metal in the compound. For type 1 compound, it will, the metal for type 1 compound, the metal will be a main group metal, which means it will be a metal that has a certain charge that we know, which means it will be from group 1A, group 2A, or group 3A. On the other hand, the metals in type 2 compounds will be transition metals. One of the things about transition metals is that they do not have just one type of charge. They have variable charges. So you don't really know exactly what charge they have until you have actually calculated the charge. For type 3 compounds, we know covalent compounds are formed when non-metals combine with other non-metals or when semi-metal combine with non-metal. It is very essential that you know these three types of compounds. Let us begin with type 1 compounds. How do we name type 1 compounds? Let us take a look at some examples. NaCl, K2S, Al2O3. These three are type 1 compounds and the question is, how do I know that? Sodium is an element from group 1A of the periodic table. It has a specific charge. It is a metal. That tells me that it's a type 1 compound because type 1 compounds always have specific charges. Potassium is from group 1A, it has a specific charge. Aluminum is from group 3A, it has its specific charge. So the question then is, after identifying 
the type of compound you're dealing with. How do you name it? The format for naming type 1 compounds is very straightforward. You will write the full name of the metal in the compound. Then you will write a little part of the name of the non-metal, which is called the base name of non-metal. Then you will ensure that you end the name with IDE. Let us apply this format to the three compounds above. The first compound, we have sodium as the metal. So we will write the full name, sodium. Then we want to write just a little part of the name of the non-metal. The non-metal is chlorine, but we will only write chlor so that we can end the name with IDE. So the name of the first compound is sodium chloride. We do not need to count how many atoms. We do not need to do anything. All we need to do to name type 1 compounds is simply follow the format. So if we want to name the second compound here, the name of the metal is potassium. Then we will write just a little name of the non-metal, which is normally sulfur. So we will write it as solve so that we can end the name with ide. And if we go to the third compound, again, all we do for type 1 compounds is to simply follow the format. So this will simply be aluminum oxide. Very straightforward. No tricks, nothing difficult. Let us now take a look at how to write the formulas of type 1 compounds from their names. Let us start with lithium nitride. We have two elements in this compound. One of them is lithium. The second one is nitrogen. If you look at the periodic table, lithium is from group 1A. It has a charge of plus one. Nitrogen is from group 5A. It will always have a charge of minus three. So, let us put the charges there. Plus one, minus three. We know that the law of conservation of mass must be obeyed. The total number of electrons to be lost by lithium should be equal to the total number of electrons to be gained by nitrogen. Nitrogen wants to gain three electrons. Lithium only has one electron to be given out. So we will need two more lithium so that the total number of lithium will be three and the total number of electrons to be given out will be three. 
which will completely balance out the total number of electrons to be gained. So the formula of the compound that can be formed between lithium and nitrogen will be Li3 because there are three lithium and one nitrogen. So the formula for lithium nitride will be Li3N. Let us take a look at the second one, calcium bromide. Again, we have two elements. The first one is calcium. The second one is bromine. Take a look at the periodic table. Calcium is from group 2A, which means it will always have a charge of plus 2. Bromine is from group 7A. It will have a charge of minus 1. So, plus 2, minus 1. But we know the total charges on calcium and on bromine must cancel out, which is another way of saying that the total number of electrons to be gained must be equal to the total number of electrons to be lost. Calcium now has a charge of plus 2. We will need one more bromine so that the total number of negative charges will be minus 2 to balance out the total positive. And that is going to give us a compound CaBr2. That will be the formula of calcium bromide. Let us now write the formula for aluminum phosphide. Aluminum phosphide will have a formula of Al and P aluminum, if you look at the periodic table, would have a charge of plus 3. Phosphorus will have a charge of minus 3. So, plus 3, minus 3. Since the charge is already cancelled out, we simply write the formula of the compound as ALP. What about magnesium oxide? Should be very straightforward as well. Magnesium and oxygen. Magnesium is from group 2A in the periodic table. Oxygen is from group 6A in the periodic table. Magnesium will have a charge of plus 2. Oxygen will have a charge of minus 2. Since the total charges already are balanced, then we simply write MgO. Let us add one more just for the heck of it. Let us write the formula for aluminum sulfide. Aluminum will have a charge of plus 3. Sulfur is from group 6A which means it will have a charge of minus 2. So, how do we ensure that the total charges are balanced on aluminum and sulfur? We would need one more aluminum and we will need two more sulfur ions so that the total positive will be 6 and the total negative will be 6. So the formula of the compound will be Al2S3. 
That is how we write the formulas of type 1 compounds from their names. 